Welcome to an introduction to 18 U.S.C. Section 207C, the Post-Employment Statute's one-year cooling off period for senior employees. In this session, you'll be briefly introduced to the statutory elements of the C restriction, and we will provide clarifying summaries of the restriction as well. We'll introduce you to a process that you can then use to apply the statutory elements to any facts you may have regarding an employee's proposed post-employment activities in order that you can provide prospective advice. We'll then assign an exercise where you'll be asked to analyze the post-employment profile of a hypothetical employee to determine whether and how the employee's post-employment activities may be subject to the 207C restrictions. Once you've completed the exercise, you should review the debrief of the exercise because it is in the debrief that we'll examine more closely the definitions and the interpretations of the statutory elements of 207C. So what are the elements? 207C is a one-year bar that begins at the end of an employee's senior service. It applies to former senior employees as that term is defined by statute. It prohibits them from knowingly making any appearance or communication with the intent to influence to or before an employee of any department or agency where the employee served in any capacity within one year before leaving senior service if that communication or appearance is on behalf of any other person and it's in connection with any matter in which the employee seeks official action from his or her former agency. Where are the 207C elements defined? The implementing regulation for 207 is 5 CFR Part 2641. The specific guidance on the application of the 207C restrictions is found at 2641.204, and there are also cross-references to various definitions in 2641.201. What does 207C bar? As is the case with 207A1 and A2, 207C is a representational bar. And that representational bar reaches to communications and appearances that are made with the intent to influence on behalf of third parties. Where 207C departs from A1 and A2 is that these communications or appearances must be to or before any agency where the employee served in any capacity during their last year of senior service. Similarly, 207C departs from A1 and A2 in that it is a broader restriction. The communications or appearances are not allowed to be made if they are in connection with any matter in which the employee is seeking official action from their former agency. 207C, as is the case with A1 and A2, does not bar self-representation. It does not bar behind the scenes assistance. It does not restrict where you can work, but it does apply to uncompensated activities as well as compensated activities. What is the purpose of 207C? 207C is primarily a cooling off period for the senior employee vis-a-vis -vis the employees of their former agency. It prevents the former senior employee from exerting undue influence on employees of their former agency and from unfairly using any influence they may have had by virtue of the authorities they enjoyed as a senior employee. Who is covered by 207C and for how long? 207C applies to senior employees. That is a statutory definition and you will find it in the implementing regulation at 5 CFR 2641.104. The cooling off period extends from one year from the date of termination of service as a senior employee. This is distinguishable from A1 and A2, where those bars begin 
from the date of termination of government service. 207C does not begin at termination of government service unless that happens simultaneously with termination from senior service. Who is a senior employee? A senior employee includes individuals who are employed in positions which the rate of basic pay is specified or fixed in 5 U.S.C. 5311 through 5318. It also includes individuals whose rate of basic pay is equal to or greater than 86.5% of the rate for level two of the executive schedule. This is going to include most of your SES employees. We're gonna talk about how this rate is calculated in a moment. But for now, let's continue with the list. It also includes 07 or above active duty commissioned officers. It includes certain appointments that are made by the president or by the vice president under 3 USC. And it also applies to people who are assigned from a private sector organization to an agency under the Information Technology Exchange Program. With respect to the 86.5% of level two, every year OGE makes this calculation for agencies and we issue it in an advisory. For 2020, this was legal advisory 2001, which is titled the effective pay adjustments for calendar year 2020. And for calendar year 2020, the rate of basic pay for senior service is $170,000, $170,665. We would also note that senior employees can be SGEs and detailees or appointees under the Intergovernmental Personnel Act. SGEs who are subject to senior employee restrictions are only those who served in a senior employee position for 60 days or more. IPA detailees and appointees who are subject to 207C are only those who received a total of pay that was equal or greater to 86.5% of level two of the executive schedule. These are discussed further in the implementing regulation in 2641. What do I need to know to give advice on 207C? Unlike 207A1 and A2, where we began with identifying the government matters that the employee either participated in personally and substantially or had pending under their official responsibility, we are not concerned with whatever matters the employee may have worked on or had supervisory responsibility for for purposes of 207C. We are only concerned with what agency or agencies did the employee serve in any capacity during the year prior to their termination from service? So our first step in our process for 207C is who is the senior employee's former agency or agencies for purposes of the representational bar? Then we need to identify any post-employment activities where the employee contemplates making any communications or appearances back to their former agency on behalf of third parties. Here, it is important that the employees be made to understand that they have a communication or appearance bar with respect to any matter where they're seeking official action. And that will be for the one year period after they terminate senior service. It is a much broader restriction than A1 and A2. How does C differ from A1 and A2? As we mentioned earlier, particular matters involving specific parties are the focus of A1 and A2. An employee is only restricted from communicating back on specific party matters that they either participated in personally and substantially or that were pending under their official responsibility. For purposes of 207C, 
the former senior employee is barred from communications and appearances that are in connection with any matter. And any matter includes all particular matters, whether or not they involve a specific party or parties. It includes broad policy options. It includes new matters, things that may not have even been under consideration by the agency while the senior employee was at the agency. And also matters that are pending in other agencies. So how do I conduct my 207C analysis? You basically, we take the elements of 207C and we place them into a process where we begin by asking, is the employee a senior employee? And if they are a senior employee, then we need to identify for that employee what are the types of appearances or communications that would be barred with respect to um, communicating back to the former agency seeking official action. We've provided you with materials for our practice exercise. Our hypothetical employee is Gabriela Torres, and she is a senior employee with the National Archives and Records Administration. We've given you a worksheet to do the analysis for purposes of 207C. Now, while we are going to ask you to confine yourself to a 207C analysis for purpose of this exercise, we will be reminding you periodically that we need to remember that our senior employees may also have A1 and A2 restrictions in addition to their 207C restrictions, so that when we are providing them prospective advice, we need to not just limit ourselves to 207C, we need also to remember that they have, may have A1 and A2 restrictions. We've given you a copy of 5 CFR Part 2641. We've given you the Federal Register version of the final rule because we will be making reference to various parts of the preamble where an additional interpretive guidance is found. We've also given you a summary of the 2641 provisions that deal with 18 U.S.C. Section 207C. This is not a legal document. This is meant to be used as a reference tool or a job aid. In our practice exercise, we'll be using the following methodology. Is Gabriella a senior employee for purposes of 207C? What is an appearance or communication? When is there an intent to influence? On whose behalf might Gabriella be making the appearance or communication? What is a senior employee's former agency? What is any matter? What constitutes seeking official action? And are there any applicable exceptions? Once you have completed the exercise, we would ask you to proceed to the exercise debrief where we will apply the 207C provisions to Gabriela's proposed post-employment activities. Thank you.